As the communications network of the human body, the nervous system enables the brain to process and respond to vast amounts of data generated from a person's senses. At the same time, the nervous system regulates all internal functions and is the driving force behind all movement which occurs automatically. The computers and electrical systems on today's high-tech vehicles perform functions similar to those of the human nervous system. Computers analyze data generated from the vehicle's sensors and switches, and also automatically monitor and control various systems and components. And while the controlling and monitoring functions of a vehicle's electrical system may not be as difficult to understand as the human bodies, they can be a challenge to figure out. Hello, and welcome to Master Tech. I'm John. And I'm Mike. To help you understand the high-tech nervous system of the new 1996 minivan, Today we're going to take an in-depth look at minivan body electrical. We'll cover power distribution, wiring and grounds, vehicle onboard controllers and convenience features. Then to wrap up, we'll run through a sample exercise to apply what we've learned. Let's get started. All underhood fuses and relays are housed in a single location, the Power Distribution Center, or PDC. The PDC is located on the left front inner fender, and it pivots to allow access to its connectors. As you can see, the battery must be removed prior to pivoting the PDC. To access the fuses and relays, simply remove the top cover. The fuse housed in the yellow holder is the IOD fuse, which brings us to an important point you'll need to keep a few things in mind when checking ignition off draw. Allow the illuminated entry system to time out before checking. It takes approximately 30 seconds. And be aware of the minimal current the transmission control module requires while powering down. It takes approximately 20 minutes to power down and during this time up to 500 milliamps of current will be present. Like the fuses and relays in the engine compartment, the fuses and relays in the passenger compartment are also housed in a single location, the junction block. Although keep in mind there is a power seat circuit breaker located under the driver's seat. On previous minivans, the fuse block, the body control module, the relay bank, and the daytime running lights module were all in separate locations. On the 1996 minivan, these functions are now centralized at the junction block. The front of the junction block houses relays, diodes, fuses, and positive temperature coefficient, or PTC, protection devices. The junction block also serves as the distribution center for the vehicle's main wiring harnesses. Daytime running lights, or DRL, can be installed simply by replacing the standard combo flasher in the junction block with a combination DRL flasher. The body control module, or BCM, connects to the back of the junction block through a 23-way connector. This month's reference book identifies each fuse, diode, relay, and PTC on the junction block. If you've never heard of PTC protection devices, don't worry. This is the first time Chrysler has used them to protect wiring circuits. A PTC acts like a solid state resettable fuse. It limits current to a trickle when there is excessive load and automatically resets when the load is removed. Let's look at an example. PTCs 4, 5, and 6 protect the right front and right sliding door lock motor circuits. As you can see, the door locks operate normally until a short is created by placing a wire across the sliding door lock motor contacts on the B post. This short causes the PTC to trip, disabling the right passenger and the right sliding door locks. Once the load is removed, the PTCs reset and the locks resume operation. PTCs protect more circuits than just power door locks. Refer to your reference book for a complete breakdown of the circuits protected by PTCs. 
So far we've concentrated on components in the junction block and the PDC. Now let's broaden our focus a little bit. Let's look at power distribution throughout the entire vehicle. The following harnesses make up the wiring for the 1996 minivan. The engine, fuel rail, instrument panel, body or EDW, dome, door, seat, jumper, lift gate, and trailer tow harness. The body harness runs from the front to the rear of the vehicle through a trough in the middle of the floor. When you need to reference splices or wiring connectors, the service manual has made it easy to identify which wiring harness each splice or connector is located in. Connector and splice numbers have letter prefixes that identify the harness. The letter designations are found in the service manual. Let's look at an example. ES01. The E is the letter prefix that identifies which harness contains the splice. E is the designation for the engine harness. The S indicates that it's a splice. The 01 identifies which splice it is in the harness. The splice location section of the service manual will lead you to the exact location. Splice ES01 is located near the transmission control module. Pretty simple. Now let's take a look at how the electrical system is grounded. Ground eyelets and ground blocks are the two means through which circuits are grounded. A ground block allows multiple loads to be grounded independently while still providing a common ground location. The electrical system is grounded in seven locations. Two body ground eyelets are located under the battery tray. Engine ground location differs for each engine. You'll find ground eyelets for the 2.4-liter engine located at the rear of the engine below the camshaft position sensor. On the 3-liter engine, the grounds attach to the transaxle fluid dipstick fastening bolt. And on the 3.3 and 3.8-liter engines, the grounds attach to the rear of the left cylinder head next to the transaxle fluid dipstick. The right cowl ground block is affixed to the base of the A-pillar next to the cowl panel. The left cowl ground block is attached to the left cowl panel. There are three ground eyelets and one ground block under the instrument panel. The radio ground eyelet, airbag ground eyelet, the blower ground eyelet, and the instrument panel ground block. And finally, there are two ground blocks at the rear of the vehicle, the lift gate ground block, and the rear ground block attached to the left rear quarter panel. Well, that completes the power distribution, wiring, and grounds for the 1996 minivan. To make sure this information is grounded in your minds, let's try a review question. True or false? According to the service manual's connector and splice numbering system, the S in BS21 refers to the wiring harness the splice is contained in. The correct answer is false. The first letter identifies the harness. In this case, B is the identifier for the body harness. The S indicates that it's a splice. The Highline 1996 minivan is equipped with eight onboard controllers. The powertrain control module, transmission control module, remote keyless entry receiver module, airbag control module, anti-lock brake controller, body control module, compass mini trip computer, and the memory seat memory mirrors module. The C squared D multiplexing system allows information to be shared between the vehicle's onboard computers. Information messages are sent and received by the computers on a twisted two-wire electrical circuit or communications link referred to as the data bus. Seven electronic components are on the bus. The powertrain control module, body control module, transmission control module, premium radio, compass mini trip computer, instrument cluster, and the airbag control module. The resistive multiplexing system allows a computer 
to recognize different voltage signals on a single circuit. Let's take a look at the left door lock and unlock circuit. The BCM receives lock and unlock requests along the same circuit from both the key cylinder and the power door lock switch. It recognizes the source of the request because each source sends a different voltage signal. You can see resistive multiplexing in action using the DRB3 scan tool. The scan tool connects to the data link connector located under the instrument panel near the left kick panel. Once the scan tool is installed, select the sensor display screen for the left front door zone switch voltages. When the driver's power lock switch is activated, it sends a 3 volt message to the BCM. The power unlock switch sends a 1 volt message. Locking the key cylinder sends a 4 volt message. And unlocking the key cylinder sends a 2 volt message. Resistive multiplexing simplifies the wiring into the BCM, which is beneficial due to the great number of circuits and components under the BCM's control. Let's take a closer look at these circuits and components. The body control module controls a combination of 18 circuits and components. You'll find a complete list in the reference book. Three body control modules are available, base, midline, and premium. Do not swap body control modules between different level vehicles. Installing a high-line BCM on a low-line vehicle can cause the headlamps and marker lamps to flash continuously after the second key cycle. And installing a low-line BCM on a vehicle equipped with a vehicle theft security system will immediately cause a no-start situation. As you can see, swapping BCMs can cause some serious problems. Let's look at a component under the BCM's control, the mechanical instrument cluster. Two mechanical instrument clusters are available, a low line and a high line. The low line cluster is equipped with a cable operated transmission range indicator and a vacuum fluorescent odometer and trip odometer. It's used only with the three speed automatic transaxle. The high line cluster is equipped with a vacuum fluorescent transmission range indicator, odometer, and trip odometer. This cluster is used with a four speed automatic electronic transaxle. Instrument clusters are equipped with a self-diagnostic test feature to help identify internal electronic problems. BCM, PCM, and TCM bus messages are continuously monitored, and when retrieved, diagnostic trouble codes are displayed in the odometer window. To enter self-diagnostics, depress the trip and reset buttons with the ignition switch in the unlock position. Turn the ignition switch to on and continue to hold the trip and reset buttons until the word code appears in the odometer window. If a problem exists, the system will display the corresponding diagnostic trouble codes. If a problem does not exist, code 999 will momentarily appear. Then the following instrument panel tests will occur. The dim test, the calibration test, the odometer segment test, and the electronic transmission range indicator segment test. Refer to group 8E in the service manual for further details. You'll need to use the DRB3 scan tool to calibrate replacement instrument panel gauges or to adjust calibration. With the ignition key in the unlock position, proceed from the body system screen to the mechanical instrument cluster calibration screen. Once the calibration screen is reached, use the up and down arrow keys to adjust the gauges. The cluster calibration table on page 8E-2 of the service manual lists the correct calibration points for each gauge. Once calibration is complete, perform the self-diagnostic test to verify that the gauges perform correctly. We've just reviewed highlights of the minivan's onboard computer systems. Before we move on to convenience features, let's try another review question. To enter mechanical instrument cluster self-diagnostics, begin by depressing the trip and reset buttons with the ignition switch in which position? A. Off. B. Unlock. C. On. Or D. Run. The correct answer is B. 
depress the trip and reset buttons with the ignition switch in the unlock position. Then, while holding the trip and reset buttons, turn the ignition switch to the on position. Four things no minivan owner can possibly do without are memory seats and mirrors, remote keyless entry, vehicle theft security, and a premium audio system. Well, that may be a slight exaggeration, but you have to agree, these features definitely come in handy. The memory seat and mirror system consists of the following components. The six-way power seat with power recliner, driver and passenger outside mirrors, the seat wiring harness, seat and recliner switches, the memory seat and mirror control module, and the memory selector switches, which are located on the driver's door. The memory seat and mirror system enables a driver to program his or her favorite seat and side mirror positions into memory. Positions for up to two drivers can be programmed. Once satisfied with the seat and mirror adjustment, momentarily press and release memory switch S to program it into memory. Then press and release memory switch 1. Do not touch any switches for 10 seconds. Once in memory, whenever the number 1 button is pressed, the seat and mirrors will return to their programmed positions. To program the second driver's position, follow the same procedure. But after pressing S, press and release memory switch 2 instead of switch 1. The memory seat and mirror system has two self-diagnostic modes. Diagnostic mode number 1 clears soft limits and sets memory switches to predetermined values. To activate diagnostic mode 1, Press and hold the S and number one buttons for five seconds. The diagnostics take place internally. Soft limits are cleared and memory settings one and two are programmed to their default settings. The default setting for button number one is full down, full to rearward, and full reclined. And the default setting for button number two is full up, full forward, with the recliner all the way up. Be sure to program the seats to a reasonable position before returning the vehicle to the customer. You may be wondering how this mode helps during diagnostics. I'll give you an example. A driver's seat with very limited rearward travel is a fairly common customer concern. More often than not, a soft limit has been set. A soft limit is set any time an obstruction prohibits the seat from traveling to its fullest rearward position. The seat will no longer travel past this point until the limit is cleared, or the rearward power seat switch is activated a second time. Diagnostic mode 1 will clear this soft limit, letting the seat travel to its fullest rearward position. Diagnostic mode number 2 provides a way of determining if the seat and mirror motors and position sensors are connected properly. To activate diagnostic mode 2, Press and hold the S and 2 buttons for 5 seconds. Mode 2 places the seat and mirrors at their midpoints. With the seat and mirrors at their midpoints, you can test switch input and motor output. When you activate a mirror or seat switch, the corresponding motor will be energized. When you release the switch, the motor will automatically return the seat or mirror to its original midpoint position. If the seat or mirror does not return to its original midpoint position, the corresponding sensor is out of range. Refer to service manual groups 8R and 8T for further information. Memory seat and memory mirror positions can also be recalled using the remote keyless entry transmitter. But before we get to that, let's cover some remote keyless entry or RKE basics. The transmitter, or key fob, communicates with the RKE receiver module, located under the left side of the instrument panel top cover. The receiver does not actuate relays directly. When a key fob button is pressed, a radio frequency signal and vehicle access code information are transmitted to the RKE receiver module. Depending on the input, the RKE receiver module then broadcasts a serial communication message to the body control module along a one-way bus circuit. There are three words within each serial communication message. The first word is a wake-up signal to the BCM. 
The second word indicates which output function is desired. And the third word indicates which transmitter is being used. The RKE receiver can learn up to four individual key fob transmitter vehicle access codes. The RKE system has three modes of operation, unlock, lock, and panic. Pressing the unlock button once will unlock the driver's door and illuminate the interior lamps. Pressing the unlock button twice within five seconds unlocks all doors, including the rear, and activates the interior lamps. Pressing the lock button locks all doors and sounds the chirp. The third mode of operation, panic, does not interact with the door lock system. You can see how effective the panic mode can be at drawing attention to the vehicle. Panic mode will remain activated for three minutes unless the ignition is switched to the run position or the panic button is pressed again. By using a programmed key fob or the DRB3 scan tool, you can program the RKE module to accept vehicle access codes for up to four key fob transmitters. Using the DRB3 with the ignition in the on position, Select the miscellaneous option on the body computer screen. Then select Program RKE. Then press any button on each transmitter within 30 seconds. You'll hear a chime each time a key fob is programmed. To program additional transmitters using a programmed key fob, again, switch the ignition to the on position. Then press and hold the unlock button on the program key fob for at least four seconds. Then while holding the unlock button, actuate and release the panic button before 10 seconds pass. The chime lets us know that the RKE module can now receive new transmitters. Within 30 seconds, press any button on each new transmitter. And the originally programmed transmitter. You'll hear a chime each time a transmitter is programmed. It's important to remember that you can't program an additional transmitter without reprogramming all transmitters. All transmitters must be programmed at the same time. Now, I mentioned earlier that memory seat and mirror positions can be recalled using a key fob transmitter. The RKE receiver uses a serial data link to notify the memory seat and mirror module of an unlock request from a program transmitter. This unlock request activates the memory module to recall the stored seat and mirror values. To program an RKE transmitter to recall a seat and mirror position, adjust the seat, recliner, and side view mirrors to the desired position. Momentarily press and release memory switch S. Press and release memory switch 1. And finally, press and release the lock button on the RKE transmitter. Now whenever the unlock button on the transmitter is pressed, the seat and mirrors will return to their program settings. Settings for a second driver's RKE transmitter can be programmed by repeating this procedure. Only instead of activating memory switch 1, activate memory switch 2. If additional key fobs are programmed, you'll have to reprogram the transmitters to recall memory seat and mirror positions. The last feature of the RKE system that deserves attention is horn chirp cancellation. Customers who find the horn chirp feature annoying can use the key fob to disable it. Simply hold the lock button on the key fob for a minimum of 4 seconds. While holding the lock button, actuate the unlock button. The horn chirp is now disabled and will not function until this procedure is repeated. We need to briefly discuss two more convenience features before we tackle the sample problem. The Vehicle Theft Security System, or VTSS, and the Premium Audio System. This is the first time that a Vehicle Theft Security System is available on a Chrysler minivan. Once the system is triggered, the horn pulses, the headlamps and markers flash, and the VTSS warning lamp flashes. 
On VTSS equipped vehicles, the body control module monitors the doors, the lift gate, hood, and ignition circuits. With the key removed from the ignition, arming can take place in any one of three ways. By pressing the power door lock switch, by using the key to lock the front door or the lift gate, or by pressing the lock button on the RKE key fob. Vehicle theft security requires 16 consecutive seconds to time out and arm the alarm. Once armed, the following actions will trigger the alarm. Opening any door, opening the hood, or turning the ignition switch to the on or unlock position. The system is disarmed by unlocking the doors or lift gate with the key or the RKE transmitter. A Highline vehicle equipped with a vehicle theft security system also comes with a premium audio system. The premium audio system is on the C-squared D-bus and can be diagnosed using the DRB3 scan tool. Aside from scan tool diagnostics, there are no drastic changes regarding audio system service. There is one minor change, however, that concerns servicing the D-pillar and rear quarter panel speakers. Unlike the AS minivan, the speaker grills are integral to the trim panels. In order to access the speakers, you must remove the trim panels. For further information on audio systems and the vehicle theft security system, refer to groups 8F and 8Q in the service manual. Before we conclude with a sample exercise, let's try one more Master Tech Review question. Diagnostic Mode 2 of the Memory Seat and Mirrors System A. Clears soft limits B. Sets memory switches to predetermined values C. Determines if the seat motor is properly connected or D. All of the above C. Is the correct answer Diagnostic Mode 2 provides a way of determining if the seat and mirror motors and position sensors are connected properly. The first step when troubleshooting is to verify the customer complaint. The repair order states that the power left rear vent window does not work. In verifying the concern, we discover that all window motors operate, except the left rear vent window, which remains closed. Now we can look for related symptoms. Because of the way the power vent window circuits are wired, we may be able to narrow down the cause of the problem by operating the window switches simultaneously. All right, we'll explore the window circuits in a minute. But first, let's try operating the left rear vent window switch and each of the other window switches at the same time. We discover something very interesting. The right rear vent window stops closing when the left rear vent window switch is set to the open position. By thoroughly analyzing this information, we can save ourselves a lot of time diagnosing the problem. Let's look at the wiring schematic. The right and left vent motor schematic is found on page 8W-60-5. In their inactive states, both sides of the right and left rear vent motors are grounded. In order to operate, one of the grounds is interrupted. Then that side of the motor is connected to power. PTC-7 protects two circuits, the right motor's closed circuit and the left motor's open circuit. Likewise, PTC-8 protects the right motor's open circuit and the left motor's closed circuit. Now, since the right motor is operational, we know there is power into the switch. Here's where a good job of analyzing data pays off. We discover that the right motor will stop closing as soon as the left rear vent switch is set to open. We also know that PTC-7 protects both of these circuits. Therefore, something along the left motor open circuit is causing the PTC to open. Most likely, there's a short to ground somewhere along circuit Q23. It would not be along Q13 because a short to ground along that circuit would still allow the window to open 
and would have tripped PTC-8 when the closed switch was depressed. After disconnecting connector D03 from the left power window switch, we'll use a multimeter to check for continuity to ground at terminal 7. Our analysis is correct. There is a short to ground along circuit Q23. There should also be continuity to ground along circuit Q13, the closed circuit for the left rear vent motor. Let's check. There is continuity, and since the current must pass through the vent motor before shorting to ground, there is a slightly higher resistance. This reconfirms that the short is along circuit Q23. We can still narrow down the location further. Let's check if the short is located between the window switch connector and connector D01. By referring to the connector and ground location section of the service manual, we find that the connector is located below the upper left door hinge. With connector D01 disconnected, again we check terminal 7 of the power window switch connector for continuity to ground. There is continuity. Therefore, we know the short is located somewhere between connector D03 and connector D01. Now we have to inspect the harness. We discover that the harness has been rubbing against a speaker screw, fraying the insulation. Once the frayed area has been repaired, we activate the left rear vent window switch. And sure enough, the left rear vent window operates. And we have effectively corrected the problem. Great work, Mike. Thanks. We have just demonstrated how a little extra time analyzing a situation can save a lot of time in the long run. A fundamental understanding of the electrical system can go a long way in not only making your job easier, but in ultimately making your customers happier. Well, that's all for now. We'll see you next month on Master Tech.